It is my belief that every person is born with the power to choose. It's an ability we cultivate as we grow into adulthood, an ability we exercise nearly every moment of our short existence. While the majority of our choices hold little to no consequences in the grand scheme of life, there comes a time in every person's life where a single choice can change the course of their lives forever. For example, what college is right for me? What career should I pursue? Am I going to marry this person? Is this the right home for my future family? Should I pick Pokemon Sword or Pokemon Shield? However, out of all the decisions we as human beings face, none can be more important or more impactful to the very fiber of our mortal existence than this. Which house should I teach in Fire Emblem Three Houses? If you're like me, choosing can be hard. You know a decision must be made, but you don't want to regret your final choice. It can take minutes of soul searchings just to decide what to eat for lunch, let alone making a choice with heavier consequences. For me, the same goes with Three Houses. Going into Three Houses July 26 release, I'm still undecided on which team to join. I'm torn between the three because I don't want to regret choosing one house over the other. What if I go Blue Lions and find out Crazy Dimitri is just a little too crazy for my liking? I killed them. I killed them all. They're dead. Every single one of them. And not just the husbandos, but the waifus and the kodomos. They're like animals, and I slaughter them like animals. I hate them! Red flags, girl, red flags! Or what if I choose Golden Deer, but Claude won't shut up about friendship? Shh, shh, Claude is going to give his final rallying cry to the troops. <clears throat> friendship. Friendship, friendship, friendship. Friendship, 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 friendship. Friendship, friendship, friendship. Remember, we can do anything with the power of friendship. I guess maybe for me, Black Eagles is the safest bet. Mostly because I don't want to make Edelgard mad. But what about you? What house are you going to choose? Are you still undecided? Well, hopefully this video will help. We're going to go over every student at the Officers Academy in order to find the right house for you. Before we begin, don't watch this expecting a personality quiz. I'm not going to sort you into your ideal house via sorting hat or horoscope. Rather than grouping students based on their talents a la Hogwarts, Three Houses separates their students by country of origin, thus making for a more diverse cast of personalities in each house. This video is merely a synopsis of the students in each house so that you can decide which house and students match your preferences. And find your top grade husbandos and wifeys. If you've seen my Persona 3 Houses video, a couple of these bios might seem familiar. But don't worry, I've added some new stuff to the old ones. Let us begin! Students in the Black Eagles house come from the Adrestian Empire, the largest and oldest country in Foldland. The Empire was originally founded by the Divine Saros herself, and the royal family of Hresvelg uses the crest of Saros, implying they are her descendants. Students in this house tend to favor axes and magic, and primarily come from noble families. The head of the Black Eagles, Edelgard is the imperial princess of the Drestian Empire, and heir to the throne. Despite having the background of a typical medieval villain, Edelgard seems like a kind, humble person. She carries a dignified air about her, while also calmly evaluating her surroundings before acting. Great A waifu material. After the five year time jump, Edelgard becomes the Empress of Adrestia, or at least is prepared to take the throne. If you thought she was dignified before, there's no denying her regal appearance. Everything from her outfit to her attitude screams ruler of a large nation. She wields a minor crest of Saros, which proves once again how closely related the Adrestian Empire is to Saros and the Church. In theory, this should make her related to Saros, the original holder of the crest. But I also think the Archbishop Rhea is related to Saros, which again, in theory, makes her and Edelgard distant cousins. Edelgard also could potentially be a wielder of two crests, as we see her hero relic contain a different crest. Next is Emo Guy. Hubert. <laughs> Hubert. His name's Hubert. All I'm gonna say is he doesn't look like a Hubert. He looks like a guy who changed his name from Hubert to Despair. Odd name aside, Hubert has served Edelgard since a young age. He's basically the strategist of the Black Eagles and will do anything in his power to get rid of obstacles in Edelgard's way. I know he's supposed to be the serious one, but would it hurt you to smile? Are, are you even happy to be here? I guess not everyone has to be like happy-go-lucky or anything, but come on. Apparently, Edelgard says he's cool once you get to know him. What a great wing woman. 
Hubert, unfortunately, doesn't have a crest, despite being the son of the Marquis Vestra house. Finally, we get to talk about the walking JoJo reference, Dorothea. She's probably the closest we'll get to a pop idol in a Fire Emblem game. <clears throat> a canon Fire Emblem game. Before entering the Academy, she was a popular singer at the Middle Frank Opera Company. She says she left the opera because you never know when your idol popularity will die. Maybe they had a phantom problem. Your joke was bad and you should feel bad. Dorothy is the only commoner in the Black Eagles and at times feels out of place. However, she treats anybody her age equally as friends. Being a commoner, Dorothea doesn't have a crest, but she for sure uses magic. Also, her name in Greek means gift of God. And let me tell you, she is the greatest gift God has ever given me. Oh my gosh, get a life. The orange haired pretty boy Ferdinand, or Ferdy as Treehouse lovingly called him, is a noble from the Adrestia region. His family basically carries the position of prime minister for the kingdom, which is a bit odd when you have a ruling emperor. Is Edelgard's family more of a figurehead, like the Queen of England or Emperor of Japan? Then again, we definitely see Edelgard leading an army, so perhaps Prime Minister Ferdinand only handles the political affairs? Ferdy is probably the cockiest and most competitive student at the Officer's Academy, so stay clear of him if those kind of personalities bug you. Still, he acts more like a cocky goof rather than a malicious person. Basically, he takes the title of nobility a little too seriously. He has this personal rivalry with Edelgard that I doubt Edelgard even acknowledges. I imagine some of his interactions with her will be quite over the top. Did you see the way Edelgard ate her sandwich? She thinks she's better than me, doesn't she? Well, two can eat a sandwich like that. Also, the way he says his last name in Japanese is freaking hilarious. Hey. Freddy has a minor crest of Chichol, which was originally owned by the divine Chichol. If you recall my last analysis video, you remember the statues of the Divine Saints. Aside from the ten heroes, crests were also given to these four saints. So when you include the crest of Saros, that puts the count of claimed crests at 15, with six crests remaining unclaimed. But I do have a few theories. Nope, no, 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 no theorizing. The game is almost out or is out now. This video is not meant for your conspiracy theories. Fine, buzzkill. Bernadetta is the hikikomori of the academy. She spends most of her time outside of class locked away in her room. You can catch her outside humming a tune, but she quickly runs away in fear at the sight of you. You can try to get in her room, but she won't let you in that easy. The Twitter account says she spends her time engrossed in her hobbies, but what could those hobbies be? There's also a screenshot where she anxiously asks Beleth why she was watching. I think it's clear that Bernadetta's hobby is writing boys love in her spare time. Just look at her watch Sylvan while humming and then watch her next to Ferdinand. She must be working on her next hit. Twin lovers, forbidden boy love. I'm joking, by the way. She has the cutest, highest pitched voice in the world, and I love her. She's just so tiny. Clearly the best option for a fortress. Her design is great too. Her messy hair and hoodie are somehow reminiscent of myself in my school days. Wow, oh, that just sounded very sad. <laughs> As a noble, Bernadetta has a minor crest of Indec. Indec. Indec? another divine saint. If you like hard-headed softies, Casper is the student for you. He's honest, intense, and friendly. I know the low-hanging fruit here is to compare him to Casper the Friendly Ghost, but he kind of reminds me of a blue-haired Peter Pan without the tights, more so than a friendly ghost. Maybe it's the rooster comb haircut he's got going on. That said, he does have a short temper, which I'm sure will get him in trouble from time to time, especially when something gets in the way of justice. Did someone say justice? He's the second son of Count Bergeliz. Ber Bergeliz? Oh my gosh, I need a pronunciation guide. He's the second son of Count Bergeliz, making him second in line to lead the family. Instead of living in his brother's shadow, aka basement, Casper enrolls in the officer's academy in hopes of making a name for himself in the martial arts. He's just begging to be a grappler, people, come on. Even though he comes from a noble family, he unfortunately does not have a crest. I wonder if he finds that unfair or unjust. Justice! Petra is that overly used foreign exchange student in anime, except instead of miraculously being able to speak Japanese or English, she is still learning. Listening to her grammatical errors reminds me of myself when I first started learning Japanese. To be fair, I probably still do. But gosh darn it, Petra is trying her hardest. Although not from Adrestia, Petra is a noble. Well, more like royalty. She's the granddaughter of the King of the Bridget Islands, which can be seen on the Fodland map. 
These islands are a vassal of the Dresden Empire, and as a sign of loyalty, they sent Petra to study abroad. I'm sure a fair majority of her interactions will address her unfamiliarity with Fodlin culture and other students learning about her culture. It could be both funny and enlightening to see. Since her homeland is away from Fodlin, Petra supposedly does not have the blood of the crest wielders, and thus does not have a crest. Looks like Dorothea has competition for best outsider. The antithesis to Casper's high energy and athleticism, Linhart is a carefree, somewhat lazy, yet brilliant member of the Black Eagles. He's basically the kid who always falls asleep in class, but still aces all his classes. Oh, how I envy your talent. Although the one thing that can keep him awake is studying crests. I'm sure Hanneman and him will get along just fine. And yes, I said he. Linhart is a man, in case you were still confused. Like me. You gotta admit, he's got a great complexion. Also, despite the fact they are basically the opposite of each other, him and Kaspar get along quite well. As heir to the Count Havering's family, he has a crest of Sethlin, another divine saint. Moving on to the country up north, the Blue Lion's house consists of students from the Fargus Kingdom. This kingdom was the first to separate itself from the Dresden Empire, but still remains loyal to the Church of Saros. Since the kingdom is known for its knights, students from the Blue Lions tend to favor spears. As you already know, Dimitri is the head of the Blue Lions, and heir to the Fargus Kingdom. When he's not studying or practicing with a spear, you can find him at his part-time job at McDonald's. He's a sincere young man who embodies everything chivalrous, although there is a faint tinge of darkness hiding behind those golden arches. Oh no, everyone, we have a bad boy up in here. Kill every last one of them! Wow, I was just kidding. He actually turned into a bad boy. Well, more like a crazy boy, but... Clearly, the five years were not great for Dimitri, because not only is he a bloodthirsty maniac, he lost his right eye. Although, how much you want to bet the eye patch is fake? It's not a phase, teacher, and my voice just naturally went this low. It's natural. To no one's surprise, Dimitri has the minor crest of Bledad. Bledad? Bladeed? Blabladad. That name. Next is big man Tiny X, Dido. Dido? Dudu? Duduo? Dodu? Man, they are killing it with these names. He kind of has a Native American vibe going on with his build and eagle earrings he has. Maybe it's more Ainu? Mm. Well, whatever the case, he comes from the northwest part of the Fargus Kingdom and is Dimitri's servant. He owes a lot to Dimitri, probably saved his life or family or something, and would do anything to help Dimitri, like covering his shifts at McDonald's. But don't let his size fool you. Dudu is a gentle giant. Since Dudu is a commoner, he does not have a crest. Blue-haired swordsman name is Felix. He's childhood friends with Dimitri, who he lovingly calls Boar. Boar? Really? There are a ton of better names to call him. Ronald McEyepatch, Limp Noodle, Pasta Head, Golden Arches. So much potential and you went with Boar. Frankly, I'm disappointed. But Felix doesn't care about witty sayings and good comebacks. He just wants to hone his sword skills. Felix actually has a crest. And what do you know, it's a major crest of Fredaris, the first major crest we've seen. In fact, he's one of only two students with the major one. It's kind of weird the house heads only have minor crests, while Felix has a major one. Maybe the difference just isn't that great. Now, a lot of you are probably here looking for your perfect waifu first, and then you'll decide your house from there. Well, search no longer, my thirsty viewer, for the queen of three houses waifus is here. Just look at her beautiful face, her thick, smooth hair, her calm expression, her voice of an angel. I'm not entirely sure what she sounds like in English, but the Japanese voice actress melts my heart. Mercedes is probably the sweetest, nicest, gentlest unit in the entire game. <laughs> I think you're overreacting. No, you're underreacting. But of course, she's more than an angel in disguise. She once was a noble from the Adrestian Empire, but now lives in Fargus as a commoner. Why the sudden move? Forced out? Left for a simpler life? I'm sure we'll find out over the course of the game. Before joining the Officers Academy, Mercedes trained at the Magic Academy at the Royal Capital. Now, I'm not sure if this is Fargus's capital or the Andrestian capital. I'm going to say Andrestia, because not only did she meet her best friend Annette there, she also met Lorette's, who she probably has a restraining order for. She claims to be a bit older than the other students, 
which I'm not surprised by at all. She gives off a more mature adult vibe. I mean, just look at her hairstyle compared to these other older adult women. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no! Seeing as she is originally a noble from the Dresden Empire, Mercedes has the minor crest of the mine. Ash Ketchum, a young boy from Pallet Town, is on a quest to become a Pokemon master. Together with his friends Pikachu, Misty, and Brock, he'll take on the Pokemon League and aim to be the best like no one ever was. I don't know where I'm going with this joke, so we're just gonna keep moving. <laughs> Ash is a serious student with a grit determination to be an admiral adult like his adoptive father. Originally a commoner, he was adopted by a lord of Fargus, Lord Lonato, which allows Ash to attend the academy. As I pointed out in my last deep dive video, Lonato becomes an enemy to the church relatively early in the game, prompting Ash to react if he's in your party. He'll probably begin to question both the church and his father, leading to some inner conflict. Or at least I could see that happening. Because he was adopted into nobility, he does not have a crest. The Misty of Three Houses is Annette, the tiny magician girl. She graduated from the Magic Academy at the top of her class, a testament to her hardworking attitude. She's incredibly kind and cheerful, and I imagine she gets along with most anybody. However, despite her hard work, she has a hard time focusing her energy on things that matter. She is definitely someone who needs some guidance. Come to teacher. Teacher, That's me. I've been thinking. Magic is fun and all, Yeah. but I really think I should be a general. Heavy armor and axes are where I belong. Just picture me on the battlefield. An impenetrable wall, a oh, damaged sponge. I am not the hero mm -hmm. Folin deserves, mm -hmm. but the hero it needs. Yeah, that's never gonna happen. Like I said before, Annette and Mercedes are besties ever since their time at the Magic Academy. They even call each other by nicknames, Anne and Mercy. That's pretty cute, not gonna lie. As a niece of a Fargus Baron, Annette has the minor crest of Dominique. And now we get to the hopeless womanizer, Sylvan. Oh, Sylvan. If you like pretty boys obsessed with the ladies and always finding themselves in trouble because of it, then Sylvan is the student for you. Or if you like Brock, same thing. Wait, how is that different from your obsession with waifus? Easy, I'm not a pretty boy. Okay, so he's not that bad. Looking at some of the girls he's got his eyes on, I can see he has his priorities straight. Dorothea, Hilda, Mercedes, he's even eyeing Archbishop Rhea. This is a man after my own heart. But beyond his infatuation with pretty women, many of his classmates look up to him as a dependable big brother, and he values his friends immensely. Honestly, I could see him being a good wingman. He's the heir to the most northern earldom of Fargus, Gautier, taking the spot from his rebelling older brother. I've already been over the kind of mess the Gautier family seems to be causing in Fodlin in my last deep dive so be sure to give that a watch if you want to know more. So Vaughn has a minor crest of Gautier. Remember how I said Mercedes was the top tier waifu? Well, scoot over girl, because here comes a new challenger, Ingrid. Wow, you are not very loyal at all. I mean, Mercedes is still number one in my heart, for now. I'm just keeping my options open. Ingrid is the childhood friend of Dimitri, Felix, and Sylvan. She kind of acts like the mama hen of the trio, making sure they don't get into trouble. At the same time, She's basically the main character of a Otome series. I'm sure there are a lot of people who would love to switch places with her. But instead of focusing on silly boys, Ingrid is dead set on becoming a knight. Her serious attitude and admiration for knights prompts Dimitri to say she's more of a knight than she thinks. However, her one weakness is delicious food. Just the sight of it can make her forget everything. I would love if when sharing a meal with her, she's the only one who visibly scarfs down the food. She hails from the Count Galatea family, and has a minor crest of Daphnel. Oddly enough, the Daphnel crest is on the Leicester Alliance banner, but Ingrid is from Fargus. Maybe there was some mixing of the families? Galtia is on the border of the Fargus Kingdom and Leicester Alliance, or maybe the Galtia family helped found the Leicester Alliance and then left. Sorry, no more theories, time to move on. Finally, we move to the east, to the Leicester Alliance, the newest country in Fodlin and home of the Golden Deer. The alliance is made up of multiple nobles who refuse to be ruled by a king or emperor. Instead, they let the Regan family rule over them. Wait, how is that any different? Congratulations, you just played yourself. Now, I hear a lot of people say the Golden Deer are mostly comprised of commoners, but that's just not the case. There are only three students with a commoner background, the rest being nobility. In fact, the Blue Lions have three commoners as well, so I think it's pretty even between those two. 
What sets the Golden Deer students apart are their skills with the bow, due to their hunting background. One last thing worth pointing out is the last names of the five nobility students in the house. They are a reference to the Shakespearean play King Lear. Not sure why they went into the King Lear inspiration, unless it ties into the story somehow, but I think it's just a neat little nod. The head of the Golden Deer is Claude, prince of the new leader of the Leicester Alliance, Reagan. He seems like a pretty chill dude, but you can't let your guard down around him. He has multiple sides to him, from what I understand, which makes sense. Claude Von Riegen by day, Spider-Man by night. Although I don't think he has legs. Post time skip Claude grows some facial hair and assumes his place as the leader of the Alliance. Other than his apparent obsession with friendship, there's not much else to say about him. Although he seems convinced he's a two-faced good-for-nothing sake. But maybe he's just hard on himself? Ah, cheer up Spider-Man. Claude has a minor crest of Riegen. A snob who knows how to get the job done, Loretz is the eldest son of the Duke Gloucester house. But don't fret, ladies. He's single and ready to mingle. Think of it this way. The closer you get to Loretz, the closer you get to his friend Claude. Is it a terrible tactic? Yes. Is it effective? Yes. I kind of feel bad for Claude. Edelgard and Dimitri have tacticians and servants who will die for them, while Claude is stuck with the lover boy over here. Claude, I need you to help me pick up chicks. Loretz was Mercedes and Annette's stalker, I mean classmate, when they attended the Royal Magic Academy. Loretz has the minor class of Gloucester. Finally, we get to Hilda, who has been around since the E3 trailer. She's the lazy type of noble who was spoiled as a child. Not a bad or even lethargic person based on the way she speaks. More like, I'd rather have someone else do it for me. I'm sure this will be the source of many a hilarious joke. Hilda, I need you to take out their axe users over there. Eh, I don't really feel like it. What do you mean you don't feel like it? Can't you get someone more capable to do it? Trust me, I would, but you're the only one over there at the moment. I have no choice but to ask you. See, that's your problem. You asked me. <laughs> <laughs> that's my Hilda. Hilda has a minor crest of Gonoril. In case you were wondering, Claude, Lorenz, and Hilda's crests are all on the Lester coat of arms. With muscles to make even Dwayne the Rock Johnson sweat bullets, Raphael is the beefy muscle man of the Golden Deer. You can bet your protein shake he never misses chest day or leg day. His muscles are so powerful, he can't even keep them from bulging through his shirt. Hey, it's the largest size they had. Right. All those muscles are for a purpose, as he wants to become the strongest knight he can. But behind those muscles lies a goofy, optimistic guy with an obsession for food. Hey, maybe him and Ingrid should get together. Leone dislikes his comment. Raphael is the son of a merchant family. His parents died in a horrible accident, and he's been through a lot. I'm sure we'll get to know more about his challenges as well as the reason behind his parents' death. Because he is from a merchant family, he does not have a crest. The youngest student at the Officers' Academy, Lysathea is only 15 at the start of the game. Despite her young age, however, she is quite talented in magic. A child prodigy, if you will. But she doesn't let her talents get to her head. She's a hard worker, striving to improve herself in any way possible and not merely relying on her innate talents. That said, she can still act a bit childish at times. Ironically, one of Lysithea's biggest pet peeves is being treated like a child. It's not too surprising considering she admits she's two to three years younger than the other students. Some of the students probably don't quite see her as a young adult. Sylvan? How come you never try to hit on me like you do the other girls? I'm pretty, smart, hardworking. My hair is white as snow. I have beautiful pink eyes. <gasps> do you have a thing against albinos? I thought you were better than that, Sylvan. No, no, it's not like that at all. Look, you're adorable, naturally. But, well, come talk to me in five years. Wait, uh, five years? You think I'm a child, don't you? Five years, you say? Hmm. Mm. 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 Oh, I love this sandwich. Mm. Teacher, <laughs> I need your time machine. <laughs> this Athea is the eldest daughter of the Count Cordelia family, and she has not one, but two crests. A minor crest of Charon, and a major crest of Gloucester. <laughs> no wonder she's so skilled in magic. I'm pretty sure that counts as cheating. <laughs> oh, and she also dislikes Ghost for some reason. Have you looked in a mirror lately? The closest thing we'll ever get to Harry Potter and Fire Emblem, Ignance is an art-loving student from a merchant family. 
His older brother will be the one to take over the family business, so his parents asked Ignatz to enroll in the officer's academy. He accepted, but deep down, he'd rather be doing something else, like art collecting. He's a kind-hearted boy with a deep love for nature and art. He'll probably give you some insight on the art pieces located in the monastery. It's the only thing that keeps him sane. Ignatz does not have a scar, I mean crest, but his glasses hold a special power. Just kidding, they don't. I must not tell lies. Marianne is Fire Emblem's version of a gamer girl. I mean, a real gamer girl, not some chick who sells bathwater online. Those bags under her eyes are from all her late nights streaming the latest tactical JRPG called Flamecrest Seasons. I've heard it's getting really good reviews. Okay, so maybe she's not streaming on Twitch, but something is keeping this poor baby up at night and I want to know what. Although, I don't think she would tell a stranger like me that. She tends to keep to herself, to the point that most people don't know the sound of her voice. She also lacks confidence in her skills and will try to ask Beleth for a replacement. You poor thing. Part of me wonders if Marianne's shyness has to do with her past. She's the adoptive daughter of the Earl of Edmund. That already implies her parents died. But what if her adoptive family hasn't been kind to her and that's why she has trouble sleeping? Mind you, I don't have much to back that up other than the origin of the name Edmund. In the play King Lear, Edmund is the name of the villain, or at least one of the antagonists. Could the name be a hint of some kind? It's hard to say at this point. However, she does love to talk to animals and prays to the goddess every day, a very devout follower of the church. Despite being adopted, Marianne does have a crest, but it's a crest that doesn't have a name at the moment. It could be the crest of the fourth saint, since we don't know where Marianne originally came from. Then again, it could be a name we just don't know yet. However, it's important to note that the crest on Edelgard's hero relic axe is the same as Marianne's. Could Edelgard and Marianne be related? The plot thickens indeed. Last and certainly not least, Leone. The daughter of a huntsman, Leone enrolled at the officer's academy for one thing and one thing only, to get paid. Her goal in life is to become a money-making mercenary and repay her village for sending her to school. To do this, she trains hard and spends her money frugally. Hmm, reminds me of a certain best girl I know. Surprisingly, Geralt was the one who inspired her to become a mercenary. She claims Geralt is her master and she his top student. She might be a little bit jealous of you for being Geralt's offspring, but I guess we'll see. Also, I want to know the juicy gossip of Raphael and Leone ASAP. They're almost in every screenshot with each other. Are they good friends? A passionate couple? I need to know! <clears throat> Leone doesn't have a crest. Of course, there are more than students to find at the monastery. There are teachers, knights, people just living there. I'm sure there will be some heavy non-student favorites, like Catherine, aka blonde hair, blue eyed Titania, or the goth doctor lady from Persona 5. Yes, they literally grabbed dem gothic legs Takemi, gave her a periodical outfit, changed her name, and called it a day. Not that I'm complaining. Alas, I don't have the time to introduce every teacher and knight to you. You'll have to see them in the game to discover more about them. However, I have covered characters like Rhea, Geralt, and Manuela in previous deep dive videos, so please check those out if you want to see more. I hope this video helped you find the students you like, the students you dislike, and the students you adore, thus helping you choose the right house for you. That said, after looking closely at the houses, it's hard to go wrong with either one. But if you are still having trouble deciding, I have one final solution. Play my Three Houses Mario Maker 2 level. It'll clear everything up. I promise. Thank you so much for watching. Which house will you choose? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, check out my other Three Houses videos. Because once Three Houses is out, they're basically obsolete. Man, I'm so good at marketing myself. So good. And if you want more videos like this one, be sure to subscribe. I'll be live streaming the game on release day, July 26th, and I would love to see you there. I asked subscribers on YouTube what time they wanted me to stream, and they said I should stream after jumping the mailman. I don't know what you all have against mailman, but I'll do my best. If I had to guess what time that would be, probably between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern is when I'll start. Also, there's a podcast episode with me over on the Three Kingdoms channel about which house we will choose in three houses. Link is in the description. Anyway, enjoy three houses, everyone. Goodbye, you good people. Finally, I finished grading all the tests. 
Can't wait to get home and sleep on my nice warm bed. My desk chair is more comfortable than my bed anyway.